All right, all right. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the stream. I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. Dylan, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Good to see you. Stephen, welcome. Good to see you also. Hope you're doing well indeed. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I think my camera's a little bit off centre. Hang on. There we go. Okay, Sorcerer Joel, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you over on Twitch. Welcome to the chat. Good to see you. Good to see you. Wow. Welcome, everybody. I hope we're all doing well today. So we've got a pretty fun flight lined up for today. We're back in the CRJ700 uh, by Aerosoft. And uh, yeah, it's going to be the first time I've flown this on stream for uh, for a little while, actually. So it should be pretty, pretty interesting. And we're going to be doing uh, what is a very challenging approach, actually. So uh, <laughs> uh, this could be a bit of a... Uh, yeah, it could be an interesting one. <laughs> Uh, but it should be interesting. So we're not only going to do a, a difficult approach, is we're actually going to do a uh, we're going to do it on Vatsim as well. So <laughs> should be interesting. We're going to be flying from uh, Denver International into uh, Aspen with uh, United or SkyWest Airlines on uh, on Vatsim. So it should be uh, should be pretty <laughs> pretty challenging. Frederick, welcome to the chat. Hello, hello, good afternoon. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. And Teddy, of course, welcome to the chat. Good to see you as always. Hope you're doing well. Uh, you guys will have to let me know what the uh, the volume levels are like today. I've been tinkering around with my microphone, so uh, volume levels are a little bit different than normal, which I haven't really listened to back on a recording yet. So you guys will have to let me know how it is. But uh, looking at the uh, the levels, it looks like it's it's okay at the moment. So yeah, let's uh, let's get into it anyway, guys. Let's get into it. I've got my flight plan filed. Five out of five. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Thank you, Teddy. Um, yeah, I've got a flight plan filed. All we really need to do is just start getting up. So here we are at uh, Denver. This is the flight beam, uh, Denver International Airport, and we are over here at uh, Concourse Bravo which is the, uh, the concourse that uh, United use, of course, at uh, Denver. Absolutely enormous airport. And uh, I've noticed there are a few issues with it, actually. I think probably it's a sim update five where it's messed up the jetways and stuff like that. It's happened at a few airports, that. But uh, nevertheless, we've chosen a, uh, a ramp here with these kind of <laughs> very tin can looking little buildings next to it. But uh, nevertheless... It's still functional. We've got all the uh, correct uh, gate numbers and taxiways and whatnot, so it should be uh, should be pretty pretty much fine, nevertheless. So yeah, it should be should be fun. Should be fun. It's a very short flight actually, so it shouldn't take us actually too long. But uh, yeah, definitely going to be. Uh, making sure we've got all the approach plates and, and things correct before we uh, kind of get underway. Everything's going to happen very quickly, especially on that sim. Um, all right. Now, just looking at that sim now, it, uh, <laughs> of course, of course, I checked uh, probably about half an hour ago. There was a, a controller on here at, at Denver, and it seems like they've gone offline uh, in the time that it took me to go live. Fantastic. So <laughs> looks like we're going to have no ATC here at Denver, but uh, there is a controller on at um, Aspen as well. So we uh, we should uh, get a bit of ATC on the way in. So we shall see. Do -do 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 -do. Today's stream sounds interesting after their latest update. Yeah, CRJ is, uh, it does seem to be in working order. Yeah, I tried it last night and it seems to be pretty good. So, uh, yeah, obviously no weather radar, but that's, you know, they never promised that really from this update. So, yeah, should be all in working order. Can I fly the F-14? It's got track says on YouTube. Welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Uh, not today, unfortunately. We actually got a planned flight in the CRJ today 
and uh, I don't have too much time today, so I won't really have flying time for, for multiple multiple things, I'm afraid. But uh, definitely be doing a stream in the F-14 sometime later in the week before uh, before it releases. I think it releases actually on Thursday, so might just squeeze one in tomorrow. My head is behind the live tab. Huh. Not sure what you mean by that one. Oh, do you mean the overlay on Facebook? Oh, I can't do anything about that, unfortunately. That's just the way it is. If you maximize the uh, the window, it should disappear, that little live section. Um, that's something that Facebook puts on. I don't have any control over that. All right, cool. All right, so let's, uh, let's get underway then. Uh, I am just going to double check before we go any further. Just double check that V-Pilot's not playing porkies on me. Let's see. Yeah, the uh, yeah, the Denver control logged off. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> That's standard standard procedure really here on uh, <laughs> when we're streaming. The controller always logs off as soon as we uh, as soon as we decide to go live. <laughs> Hey, it's got track. Appreciate the uh, the kind words, dude. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> very flattered. Very flattered. Thank you very much. Manical, good uh, good afternoon. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right then, guys. So without further ado, let's start getting things set up here then. So we've got our flight plan. I don't need to show you guys that. Uh, but uh, we'll start getting the aircraft loaded up. So zero fuel weight is going to be uh, 26380. So actually a little bit on the heavier side today. And for fuel, uh, I'm actually just going to basically just drop that down like so. And set payload in simulator. And then I'm actually going to just do it, do it the more fun way. Oh, I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to actually turn the batteries on first and call in a ground power car. We'll get some doors open as well whilst we're here. And then I'm going to jump on back here and get the fuel loaded in this way. So we want a block fuel of three tons, 3077 to be precise. Oh, look at that. So very, very close. Let's start getting the fuel loaded up. If we check down here, we can see the fuel is, uh, is now loading on board. Looking very good indeed. Let's get that GPU power activated. We'll get our nav lights, logo lights on as well. Uh, making sure all these lights are out other than the uh, AC power. Fuel boost pumps can stay off for now. Isolation valve open. Uh, we shall uh, just leave the hydraulics off for a uh, moment here and we'll get the recirculation fan and the packs into the on position ready for when we get some uh, air coming through. Uh, we'll get the windshield heat to low emergency exit lights. We can arm those. Uh, no smoking signs can go on and the seatbelt signs can stay off for now as we're still loading the fuel. ELT is armed and, uh, and that is looking good. We'll pop down here and bring up the hydraulic page. Uh, going back overhead, we shall do a quick test on the, uh, the hydraulics here. So we're going to turn all three systems on. Everything powers up, looking good. We'll put them then back to auto and they should all now drain of hydraulic pressure, which is looking good. And then we'll turn the three, uh, system three back on with the 3A uh, pump there. So that's fine. Great stuff, all done there. Firex, we can do a quick test on that one as well. So we'll pop that button there and uh, bring this back to the status page. I, uh, I think I missed that there, but uh, if we press it again, fire assist, okay, that's looking good. Uh, everything else up above should be all set now. We're all looking good there. Then the standby compass light on, and uh, that is that. Just going to jump down here and get the IRS both to nav mode, so they're aligning whilst we wait. We'll turn the standby radio on as well. 
and uh, everything else down here is set we'll get the stab trim and mac trim on and that is looking good all right let's get a quick atis uh, unfortunately no um controller on on vatsim at the moment but we're just going to use the in-game atis Altimeter two nine decimal nine and nine, which is all I really wanted. Okay, great stuff. I'm gonna leave that guy. <laughs> I'm just gonna use the sim brief planned uh, runway because uh, um, I can't be bothered messing around with uh, Microsoft uh, ATC. So that's all good and we'll jump down here and we'll bring in the gps position and stick that in our irs alignment page so that's good great stuff crj fully restored uh, so uh, asks uh, as lively vids uh, i believe it is yeah it, i flew it last night and uh, it's uh, it's feeling pretty good so yeah yeah uh, Mariner, yo, welcome. Good afternoon, brother. Hope you do well. Or good evening, should I say. Uh, I play Flight Sim on Xbox and think about buying a PC. All the peripherals on Xbox are cheap. What type of PC do you have because the game looks so good? Uh, I have a... Well, I mean, the specs are actually in the description of the video. So if you go down below the video and click see more on the description, uh, my specs are all down there. Okay, so we'll get a little bit more lighting on the go in here, although it is pretty bright here, so don't need to worry too much, but don't need those floodlights on, really. We'll get the integral lights on anyway, just in case it randomly gets really, really dark on us. Uh, we'll do an anti-skid. Uh, sorry, we won't do an anti-skid. We'll do... <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a main landing gear bay, bay overheat warning. Bay overheat. All looking good. We get the uh, message on the ICAS and the warning lights appearing. And the bings, so it's looking good. This one we should just get a bing. And there we go. We've got the yellow caution. Main landing gear bay overheat uh, warning, test, uh, warning fail. That's looking good. Engines are in N1 sync. And uh, we can give a quick lamp test as well. So I'll flick those on. We can see all the lamps are on above and looking good. The test system too as well. Also looking good. Checking the right hand side lights are on on this side on the autopilot panel. So that's looking good. Uh, everything else is fine here. Spoilers are down. The thrust levers in the shut off position. Flaps are zero. Versus are off. Uh, spoilers are in the auto position and uh, everything else down here we've already set so that's looking good the parking brake is actually engaged the uh, emergency landing gear um what is this called lever thing <laughs> it's stowed adg is stowed adg uh uh control unit we can test that and the emergency flaps are in the normal position Okay, so that's looking good. We can start punching in the FMS data now. Okay. Uh, Chris Shuttleworth, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. TCA stick and throttle arrived today. Exciting. Very exciting indeed, dude. <laughs> Decided not to wait for the honeycomb uh, Tango Fox shot. Fair enough. Yeah, no ETA on it, is there just yet? I keep checking on it and it's just not progressing. So. Yeah, I think Honeycomb as a company are struggling quite a lot with a lot of their orders and demands they've got at the moment. So I don't know if we'll see that for a while, actually. Need to master this aircraft a few, few times with not so good landings. Yeah, it's really nice, actually. Really nice aircraft to fly, I think. And um, very enjoyable and it just feels really nice. And when you get, when you get it down, it's uh, an absolute dream. Very satisfying to land as well. How do you donate? We've got, uh, you can 
leave a tip if you go to the again if you go to the description of the video on youtube there's a, uh, a link down there with all the other links it should say tips i think it's one of the first ones on there and uh yeah that will take you to stream labs and uh, you can leave a, a a tip through there if you are so inclined where we're we flying uh off to, off to uh to uh, aspen uh we're going from denver to aspen on uh yeah we're on vatsim yeah Okay, so let's start getting some stuff punched in. We're going Kden to uh, Case. Alternate is going to be uh, Kden. And the originating runway, we're hoping... Well, we're going to just choose 17 right for the originating runway. And the flight number is uh, SkyWest. Uh, 5597. Stick that in there, and then we'll execute. Hey, Michael, welcome to the chat. Thank you very much for the 50 stars, dude. Much appreciated. Very kind. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, before we get underway any further, then let's choose our departure. So we're actually going to be using the Connor 7 departure with the Werner transition. So we'll choose that and that. Execute, and we'll go then to our flight plan next page and uh, basically all we need to write in here is uh, Zakor. that's literally the only waypoint on the flight plan <laughs> very very simple and we'll go in direct there and we'll execute we'll stick in our arrival because we kind of know what to expect i mean i have a, an arrival that i want to try uh we're gonna go for the localizer uh localizer dme east for runway 15 and we are going to use uh red table dbl as the transition and i'll do a, a brief with you guys once we've uh, got everything punched in here let's go to our legs page we're just going to check for any discontinuities or anything like that so we have a discontinuity from zakor to red table so we'll just take that and drop it over there and then everything else looks good. We've got the missed approach in here as well. Lynn's Gleno and hold at Gleno. That's all looking good. We'll execute that as well. And I'm actually just going to bring up the chart on my other screen and just make sure all these altitudes are correct. And then, like I say, we'll, we'll do a briefing once we've got everything punched in here. So for our departure, let me just do this real quick. Okay, let me just make sure I've got the correct altitudes in here because, uh, like I say, this uh, arrival is is very very uh, it, it's it's a difficult ar arrival. So we're we're gonna need to have everything punched in correctly so we can get some decent guidance. Uh, we'll check these on the way out as well. So foams we need to be below ten thousand, which is fine, and then tavern above twelve thousand. Vaughn at above 14, above 16 at Tebow, and above 17 at Connor. Werner has no restriction. That's fine. Uh, we'll have a quick look then at the arrival. So uh, we want to go to Aspen. And like I say, we'll have a look at this uh, separately in just a moment, guys. Uh, Benespi, welcome to the chat. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. How's life? It's uh, not too bad. Can't complain. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, how's things with you? Okie dokie. So let's make sure we've got the uh, correct uh, restrictions in for our arrival. We're going to do the uh, lock DME East for runway 15. And the initial fix is Jagu, which is here. 
thirteen four is uh or above is is in here so i'm actually just going to change this to 13 4 because i don't want it to bring us in any higher than that uh, 12 9 again that's correct but i'm going to remove the above and same with this one i'm going to do the same there and the next one is doip that's our final approach fix 11700 and then from there as you can see uh hang on let's see Okay, it doesn't tell you here, but from DOIP to SEAG, we've got a <laughs> 6.59 degree descent to do, and that's going to be interesting. Uh, but everything, <coughs> excuse me, everything is in there and looking good. I assume this is a calculated altitude. The actual uh, airport elevation is 7837, which... Uh, well, it's not actually showing in here, but we'll go with that. Okay, so let's go perfect and our cruising altitude for this uh, flight is flight level 240. Our alternate cruise is uh, flight level 290. And uh, we'll actually have a quick look up here. Let's see if our refueling's done. It is. So we'll get the seatbelt signs on and we'll uh, just turn this off. Come back over here. Init fuel from aircraft. Copy data and we'll set all while we're there as well. So we've got that page filled in correctly now and that's all looking good. Uh, we've got a zero fuel weight of 26380. Uh, this is a little bit less for some reason. Why is that? Oh, it's because I didn't actually set it, did I? Okay, I'm smart. 26380. There we go. And then I'll just have to do that again and again. And 26380. Okay, great stuff. Everything is incorrectly now. There we go. Beautiful stuff. Trim as well, before I forget, is 7.4. So we'll just give that a little blip down and that's looking good. Okay, so we're pretty much there. Let's just check the VNAV page. So we've got a transition at 18,000, which is the usual for the US. That's fine. Cruising at 240. And the transition uh, flight level for the uh, arrival is uh, 180 once again. So that's all looking good. Finally, let's just uh, bring up the plan view here on the MFD. And let's just uh, have a quick browse make sure it all looks as we expect top of descent just after connor werner zakor uh, red table jargu now i'm tempted to actually use a different transition because that is actually um that's like two unnecessary turns almost so let's see if we can actually have a slightly different transition on the arrival there uh so you've got Ajax, Red Table, and uh, that's your only options. I think Ajax is more like here. So um, that might actually be a little bit better. Let's see. Okay, that is not better. Let's just leave it at Red Table. That's fine. Ugh. What runway are departing? Uh, we're going to go from 17 right. 17 right and I'm at stand Bravo 65 at uh, Denver. Oh, of course, the uh, Aspen controller has gone offline now, of course. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Okay, so that's everything all set anyway, and uh, we're looking good. Let's do a, uh, a departure briefing then. Uh, sorry, we can turn the flight directors on now as well. Your damper on as well. And uh, let me just quickly check the charts here for the initial climb clearance. Right, initial climb clearance is, uh, well, there isn't an initial, initial clearance as such, but it, it, there's a maximum altitude of foams of 10,000. So I'm just going to 
leave it set at 10,000, which we've got in there anyway. So that's looking good. All right, and then we'll go to the MFD menu. I'm just going to add in this little waypoint window here. It's going to turn off the mist approach and add in the speed and altitude for my reference on departure. You can see foams there, 10,000 or below uh, is uh, enunciated there. So that's looking good. Um, so let's do a bit of a departure briefing then before we get underway. So let's get our charts for Denver. Very... Very, very complicated charts, but uh, should be uh, easy enough to brief. On course B we're at, so we'll take that one as well. Um, okay, let's bring up the fuzz pad real quick. Just getting the last couple of charts here. Okay, so we are at uh, concourse B. We're just here at the end. Uh, by this little thin strip of the building here. <laughs> I believe this is where all the United sort of express uh, um, aircraft depart from. As you can see here, this is a zoomed out view. You can see we're just uh, uh, there. That's the pink arrow. That's us. Uh, in fact, that is uh, stand Bravo. Oh, hang on. Why is there no stands up here? This is where we should be. <laughs> oh, it says under construction still, apparently. Well, it looks like it's built to me. Anyway, <laughs> we're up here, Bravo 65s. I mean, as you can see, the uh, regional jets do depart from here. You've got specific taxi lanes, actually, just on the other side here for CRJs, uh, which is very cool. Um, but nevertheless, we are actually up here in this case. For some reason, the charts, maybe the actual scenery is ahead of what is real life. So, um, yeah, a bit of a strange one, that one, actually. Never seen that before, but uh, nevertheless, I suppose it explains why these buildings are looking a bit a bit temporary. Anyways, uh, so for the taxi, we are going for runway uh, one, I forget which runway, 17 right, which is... Just over here to our, our, our sort of left-hand side. So that's uh, pretty easy, actually. We're going to push back onto Bravo November. We'll taxi basically Bravo November. And then Bravo November. Uh, let's see what we've got. So many intersections. Yeah, we'll go Bravo November 5 Echo. Which is here. And then we'll just go straight ahead, make it simple for us. Mike 9 and 17 right. It's nice long runway for a CRJ, that. So should be fine. No issues. I believe we do have some wind sort of coming from down here. So, I mean, we could use one of these runways that are pointing 2625, but I don't think it's entirely necessary. Um, we're just going to go with the sim brief flight plan. Uh, and then our departure route, this is the Connor 7 RNAV departure. Uh, our transition is going to be Werner, which is really the only transition you can have on this one uh, if you're going further out. So we're going to go uh, from runway uh, 1. Uh, I've forgotten the runway again. Uh, 17 left, sorry, right. 17 right. <laughs> 17 right. We're going to take a heading of 173 which I'm going to set actually before I forget. Heading of 173, we are going to uh, climb out with a uh, minimum altitude of 5934 before we make this uh, right turn. And then we're going to turn out direct to foams, at which point we need to be below 10,000 feet and not above. So that's it's all set and uh, looking fine. And then once we pass foams, we're going to continue our climb out with a minimum altitude of, of 12,000 at Tavern and so on. These altitude restrictions aren't going to be a problem for us, so I'm not even going to really brief them. But uh, we just need to obviously continue our climb out there. So that's no problems. Uh, there are some climb gradients here required, but again, it's not going to be an issue in the CRJ. Transition altitude 18,000. 
and then uh, moving on to the approach. We will have a quick look at this now, uh, as we don't. I don't think we'll have too much time to brief it in the air. But looking at the um, looking at the chart here, we've got the um, Box DME East for Aspen, and uh, yeah, one 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 decimal one five is the frequency of an inbound course of 151 degrees. Uh, we're going to come in from red table here, as I mentioned earlier on. Uh, we're going to come in from red table and then turn out and then join the localizer inbound at Jargu, which is our initial fix, 13 miles uh, DME. Uh, we're then basically just going to follow this vertical profile down to DOIP. Uh, making sure we are on profile and uh, we'll probably want to get configured basically whilst we're doing this descent portion and um, to be quite honest I might actually get I'll probably configure for flaps 8 by Jargu and then we'll start getting the rest of the flaps out before DOIP and then from DOIP to SEAG well essentially to the runway we've got a 6.59 degree descent angle uh, which is going to require a, uh, a very, very steep descent rate of 1,638 feet per minute at our expected uh, VAP, which is probably going to be around 140 knots, maybe a little bit less. Uh, but nevertheless, it should be a quite high uh, rate of descent required. And our minimums are going to be 10,220 feet uh, or 2,383 feet above ground level. Uh, the airport elevation is uh, 7,837. If we need to go around, we need to take a right turn and join this uh, offset uh, LDA, which is, uh, it's actually a back course, but it's 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 normal sensing. So you, you can kind of treat it flying in this direction as a normal localizer. So we're gonna set uh, a course of 303 and uh, fly outbound. Now, I've tested this in the sim, and although the nav aid is in the correct place, for some reason the aircraft just doesn't capture it properly, although it shows the raw data. So it'll just be a case of flying the raw data and uh, following it outbound 303 degrees to Linz and then to Gleno, where we'll hold and then set up for another approach from there. Uh, so that is the approach procedure. Once we arrive at uh, Aspen, we've got a very simple taxi. We'll probably depart, uh, leave the runway at Alpha 5 or Alpha 6 and taxi onto the terminal, which is right there. And uh, and that should be, uh, should be it. If anyone has any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think we're about good to go ahead with a bit of an engine start. Uh, Benespi says, all good. Flying from Bristol to some airport near Paris in the Beechcraft Baron. Doing a tour of Europe. Sounds fantastic, dude. Sounds fantastic. I hope you're enjoying. I've uh, I've not done a much flying in the Beechcraft Baron or any of the Beechcraft aircraft, actually. Um, so, yeah, enjoy. Hope that's good. Yeah, Mariner. It's, yeah, standard procedure, isn't it? It's very annoying. <laughs> Let's see. Do we have a center controller on, though? No, we don't even have a center controller either. Never mind. Paul, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Good to see you. Also got this beautiful sort of retro uh, United livery. I believe this was uh, this was the livery they used before they were sort of merged with another company. See the United hangar behind us in the background there. Very, very cool indeed. All right, and then you've got the cool terminal up here at uh, Denver. Ooh, let's do a bit of this. Okay, you've got this very, very cool sort of main terminal building down here with the sort of tents and this little wavy looking building. Looks very cool at night. I'll show you guys real quick, actually, just because it looks so cool. There we are. Beauty. Very cool indeed. Quite nice at sunset as well. Look at that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let's go back to lifetime. There we go. Beautiful stuff. Okay, let's jump back inside then. All good? Yes, I'm very well. Thank you. Yeah, very well. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, merged with Continental. Yeah, it rings a bell that. Yeah. 
rings a bell. Okay, so I think we're pretty much good to go for the engine style. We'll just quickly run the checklist here. So I'm actually going to just run this in my head because it's such a long checklist. I don't think you guys want to hear me reading all this out. Um, but uh, yeah, let's just very, very quickly uh, run that in my head. We haven't actually checked the oxygen Oscar mass, which we can do right here. That's looking good. And uh, so is that one. We have plenty of oxygen on board, so that's fine. All right, audio warning panel was checked. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm just again, I'm just going to check it in my head because it's a long one. Okay, everything's good. Before start checklist, passenger signs are on. Landing elevation is uh, it's not set. Um, this is where you would you would normally set the landing elevation for where you're departing. Now. Um, I'm lazy and I generally don't don't set this because I know we've got no chance of an engine failure in the sim. But uh, we're at 5,400 feet. Let's just let's just do it just for completeness. 5,400 feet. We're looking at this blue number. Uh, sorry, not not 5,000 feet. 500 feet. There we go. 540 will do it. Uh, oh, sorry, we are 5,400, aren't we? <laughs> this is why. Now I'm regretting this. We'll need to give this a good wind when we get into Aspen anyway, so it's probably good that we've set it. Now, there we go, 5420, that should do it. Uh, altimeters are set to 9999er. FMS is checked and set, IRS is aligned and nav. Radios and nav aids, uh, we've got none to set because we're doing an unav departure and takeoff briefing is complete. Uh, I'll tell you what I will do though, just to get a little bit ahead of myself here, I'm actually just going to set in the localizer for Aspen in the uh, recall here. I'm going to put it on 111.15 because again, this is a very short flight. I'm also going to actually go over here and in Nav2, I'm going to put the back course LDA in 108.5. And I'm actually going to just bring that up here on my left hand side. And I'm going to just actually, I can't set the course because I'm not in range. So that's nice. Uh, okay, we'll leave that as it is then for now. And uh, I'll just put that in the recall for now. We can check the radio page. We'll put that back to automatic. Okay, so uh, cleared to start. We could start the APU as well, couldn't we? Turn the fuel pumps on. Get the beacon light on as well. And we'll get the doors closed. Okay, so APU is on. Electrics are checked. Takeoff data is set. Doors are closed and locked. Beacon light is on. Fuel pumps and quantity. Fuel pumps are on and the quantity is uh, three tons. Hydraulic pumps are auto and on. Parking brake is currently on. All right, so APU is starting up. We've got APU uh, on 100% N1. We'll check the electric page. APU is providing power, so we can actually turn off the external power now and go ahead and disconnect and remove the chocks. All right, let's do it. Uh, we'll tune 1228. Yes, we are on VATSIM, remember? Let's not forget about that. Go back to the status page. Great stuff. <laughs> you went for 69. Okay, where's that one? Oh, there you are. Beautiful. Love to see it. All right. Denver traffic, Skywest 5597, stand Bravo 65, pushing back, facing to the east. Okay, let's do this thing. So let's call in a pushback tug. I don't know if it's actually going to appear for us. But it doesn't seem to want to appear. I think this airport's had most of the ground services screwed up by the new update. So we're just going to have to have a ghost pushback. Let's release the parking brake and uh, off we go. 
Okay, let's go up top. Engine right starts. N2 is rising. Twenty percent N two. There we go. Let's start the fuel flow. Quite a long pushback here. All the way in. Let's just put our call sign in on here. I don't think it actually makes a difference with that sim, but anyway, it's there. Turn our transponder to uh, one, and we'll put the two casts on above. Okay, that engine's looking good. EGT uh, is, or ITT in this case, is dropping. Let's start engine, uh, the left engine. Try to do the pushback and start the engine here. 20% N2. Let's start the fuel flow. There we go. That's not a bad pushback, actually. Let's hold there. Apply the parking brake. Parking brake is on. And pushback. There we go. Let me know what the sound's like again, guys, if you need me to turn it up or anything. Okay, so we've got all the cautions disappeared now. That's looking good. Isolation valve open, seatbelts no smoking. APU is still on. Let's get that now turned off now after just verifying the electrics are now supplied by both the engines, which they are. Jumping up top, APU off, APU power. Winding down, AP door closed. Uh, great stuff. Let's get the manual uh, crossflow to manual. I'll turn the probes on as well. And we'll come back down and do a quick flight controls check. So, full left on the ailerons, full right, full up on the elevator, full down, full left on the rudder right on the rudder and uh, neutral there we go looking good stabilized uh, sorry trim stab trim is set to 7.4 which is as per the EFB so that's looking good bring this back to the status page and just box those little messages there as well okay so I think we are pretty much good to go we'll set the flaps to 8 as well and we'll arm the reverses Okay, taxi checklist, flaps are eight, flight controls are checked, trims are green and checked, thrust reversers are armed, flight instruments are checked, and the brake temperature is uh, checked. There we go, looking good. We're going to do the before takeoff checklist now, because it's only a short taxi, so lights and strobes will turn on as we move along here. Fuel cross flow is manual, flight attendants are advised. Uh, we could actually just do a bit of that right here. Doesn't actually make a noise, but never mind. TCAS is on and the radar doesn't work with this aircraft. CAS is checked and okay. All right, that's looking good. Let's get our taxi light on. And let's get underway. I can break released. Let's do one. I own a CJ4. Awesome, dude. It's actually showing up as a CJ4, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Nip, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Good to see you. We've got takeoff config okay. That's looking good. And reverse is armed as well. Let's 
No, we're going to taxi. I'm not sure why it does this thing where it's just pulling me to the left. I think that's probably an issue with my joystick, to be quite honest. Let's just add a huge dead zone there and hopefully it goes away. Yeah, I think it's helped a little bit. So we're going to go straight forward onto uh, Bravo November. If you remember on the charts. Bravo November and then Mike 9. I'm just going to use the rudder to steer. This is ridiculous. I'll bring up the tablet here. You can see us taxiing along here. About to turn left onto uh, into Bravo November, and then we're going to go straight ahead onto Mike 9, which should be right in front. You can see Mike 9 there, which is just this bit here. It doesn't actually have the spot 5 echo on the ground as well, which is a bit strange. Seems like a fairly obvious detail to miss, miss out. But never mind. Never mind. Whoa! Okay, we've got Mike 9. He's going to go straight ahead onto runway 15, uh, 17 right. Where are we off to? We're off to Aspen. Dylan. Should be pretty, pretty cool. All right, so we're on Mike 9. I wish that uh, he would update these signs, actually. This is a flight beam scenery, and flight beam is well, very well known for doing some very, very high detail sceneries, but uh, on this one, it seems to have been neglected a little bit. This was one of the first to come out for Microsoft Flight Simulator. All right, so we've got Mike 9. Um, nose wheel steering wasn't armed there, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless, it's been working okay for us, which is rather strange. We've got a bit of an uphill taxiway here, so let's get a bit more power in. Uh, we're entering the runway, so let's get our strobes on. Let's activate takeoff mode here as well. And we've done the before takeoff checklist. Checking the approach sector, all clear, and checking to the right, it's looking good. Denver traffic, Skywest 55901, taking off runway 17 right at Werner, uh, sorry, Connor 7 transition, uh, Connor 7 departure, Werner transition. All right, let's just pause there. One thing I didn't do actually was actually add in a. I'm lost. There we go. I didn't add in a flex temperature. There we go. Okie dokie. Flex is in. Everything's looking good. Let's do it. You can see we've got a pink flex temperature there now. 85.9 is the uh, takeoff thrust. So let's spool them up. Stable, looking good. ITT is dropping. Release the tow brakes and up to Toga, which is actually flex in this case. Looking for 85.9. Okay, it's gone way above that. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Anyways, takeoff thrust is set. 80 knots. one and rotate. Okay, pause to brake gear up.
Start making that right turn. Get nav mode in. And speed. Let's go back to climb thrust. Pulling the flight directors just for the moment. And I'm going to stick the autopilot in there and increase the speed to 250 knots. Speed's coming up. Let's go to flaps one. And flap zero. Climb thrust is set. Reverses can be disarmed. Uh, manual crossflow can come off as well. Landing lights should have been on. Speed is increasing, we're looking good, nice and stable. Center that heading bug. Okay, climb checklist. Fuel cross flow is auto, bleeds and APU is set. Thrust reverses are off and the CAS is checked. No cautions, we're looking good. All right. Oh no, my map was there the whole time. Guys, I'm so sorry. I just that's super annoying. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I am very smart indeed. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> at least you did. At least it was in the corner of the screen, and you didn't miss too much. I hope. All right, so we'll level off. We'll level off at 10,000. And uh, we're going a little bit quick. Uh, I'm just trying to keep that speed down. Uh, once we've passed foams anyway, we can accelerate to 290 and then carry on our climb. There we go, there's foams. Let's carry on climbing out now to our cruising flight level of an altitude that I've forgotten. 240. 240, let's go to speed mode and speed 290 knots. Let's go back to climb thrust. And we're going to carry on climbing out. We're actually going to Go to standard pressure as we've cleared ourselves now to a flight level. Center that heading bug and uh, and we're off. <laughs> they all turn around, land and go do it again. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry about that. That's that's not it's not fun, is it really? I need I need someone to I need a way to like so that chat can change it for me. I do that. I do that so often. And we're off, guys. We're off. Beautiful Denver below us, looking very, very uh, flat. Very good. And then we're off into the mountains. We're off. It was fine, I could see everything. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough, yeah. It was only in the corner anyway, wasn't it? I think one thing I would have liked, usually I like to have the uh, the hand cam up on the departures, like that, but never mind. Never mind. Oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't turn the uh, the cabin lights on, did we? Passengers sat in the, in the dark. Hey Reese, welcome to the chat. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. It's uh, it's going good. Going good, thank you. Yeah, we're on the climb out. Everything's a good, beautiful weather. Can't complain. 
Gary Carter as well. Sorry if I missed that earlier on. Thank you very much for subscribing on YouTube. All right, so we're on the climb out here. Tavern, we needed to be above 12,000, which again, like I said, we're not going to have an issue with these waypoints. And uh, yeah, we're looking good. Love how smooth the CRJ screens look. They look so buttery smooth. It's amazing. Love it. Frame rate's really nice in here as well, considering I'm streaming as well. It's uh, super smooth. Love it. Okay, so what I'm going to do just temporarily is I'm going to actually turn off the speed and altitude just so I can see that top of descent a little bit easier. And uh, once we get to the top here, we'll switch over to our little VNAV window. Beautiful day here in, uh, in Denver. Looks like we're kind of headed into the clouds a little bit though, unfortunately. I wear skis in the cabin now, of course. <laughs> yeah, everybody can wear skis in the cabin. Everybody. It'll be a hoot. <laughs> Back to you now. Awesome, dude. I shall uh, see you on the way. I hope you're ready for this brooch, Mariner. <laughs> There is actually a visual approach that you can do, which uh, which is quite cool. But I, I did want to test this instrument approach because it, it, it was a little bit funky when I tried it before. All right, so we've got altitude capture, pulling the throttles back. Let's go to uh, VNAV here. So we've got our top of descent there as well. Always nice to have. Let's go TCAS, turn that to below. Great stuff, not far to go till we start our descent actually. And we'll do our uh, descent checklist in just a moment. Yeah, not far at all to go to till we start our descent. So I'm gonna have to just uh, get things uh, sorted out here real quick. So our airport elevation for our destination is 7,837 feet. Seven eight forty should do it. That's looking good. I can turn these lights off now. Then the logo light off as well. Seatbelt signs can come off as well. That's looking good. We're actually approaching our top of descent now. So I'm actually going to go ahead and set our altitude back down to 11.7. There we go. And I'm actually just going to start the descent already. So we'll go to our direct intercept page here. And I'm just going to skip that forwards to Jagu here. Uh, okay, 1,200. Okay, that top of descent is a bit funky, but let's just follow it. Nevertheless, it gets us out the clouds at the very least. All right, let's bring the throttles back so we don't get too much speed picked up there. Let's uh, also set our minimums. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the DH uh, because the DH will actually give a call out. Like, it'll actually audibly call out minimums, whereas the MDA doesn't, for whatever reason, I'm pretty sure it's not. It's supposed to have a call out, but it just doesn't. So, in fact, let's just test that for science. Uh, let's go MDA. Oops. MDA uh, is going to be 10,220 feet. So, it might be scrolling for a few minutes here. <laughs> Ten thousand two hundred and twenty. 
that's a bit of an error, isn't it, there? That, I'm sure that's not supposed to look like that. Then 220, let's take a screenshot of that as well. That's not right. Okay, 10 to 20 is our minimum, that's set. Look at this beautiful scenery over Aspen. A little bit in front of the profile here. Let's get our speed back up a bit. And um, the reverses. Okay. Uh, descent checklist, land of elevation is set, fuel is checked at 2.5 tonnes, TCAS is set, radar is not in use, CAS is checked, landing data is set, approach briefing is complete, we did that before we set off, so I'm actually going to just uh, switch this over and switch this over now. Um, okay. That's good. So I'm actually just going to quickly just check the nav source and just see if it's picking it up yet, which probably won't be, which it's not. That's fine. We'll go back to nav mode there. All right. Great stuff. It's worked out a very shallow descent rate, but it's probably because of the fact that we have that really steep descent a little bit later on. It's telling me 2.5 degrees here, but that's certainly not correct, is it? Well, we're not going to be following this anyway for the final approach, so that doesn't really matter. All right, let's see if I can catch up with chat here. This is pretty hands-on here. Uh, Mystic Biffs, welcome to the chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing very well, thank you. Yeah, how are you doing? Thanks for asking. <laughs> Teddy, enjoy. Enjoy. Uh, Ricardo, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. All right, let's get the ATIS anyway at um, Aspen. So uh, we've got. I'm going to bring this up on my uh, browser here. Base. Okay, so we've got pretty he pretty uh, pretty heavy winds. Uh, we've got 10 knots, 360, gusting 16. Uh, visibility is 10 statute miles, so that's fine. Looking good on that front. Uh, we also have smoke in the area. I'm not sure if that's going to be simulated. Uh, no clouds under 12,000, which is fine. Temperature is 28 degrees. Dew point is 2 degrees. Altimeter is 3016, which I'm actually going to set now. Uh, 3016 was the altimeter. That's set. And uh, that's looking good. Okie dokie. So we're going for runway uh, 15 here. So <laughs> we're definitely going to have a tailwind on the approach. which is not that great really, is it? But I don't think you can actually approach from the other side. Uh, circle to land, there is no MDA for circle to land, so you, you can't do that. Yeah, you, you can't land from the other side at this airport, this the terrain, so we're just gonna have to go for this one. I mean, I suppose you might be able to if you're in a little tiny plane, but not in this thing, so. We're just gonna have to <laughs> just gonna have to go for it guys. Okie dokie, so we're still on profile, everything's looking good. We're a bit fast on speed, slowing down a bit more. We've got 11.7 set, so we're gonna just continue descending down to our final approach point. I'm just gonna send a quick text message out on Vaxim as well. Okay, 
sent, sent a quick message out on Unicom. Let me just uh, very quickly check to see if we're picking up those localizers yet. We are not. Probably not going to pick them up till uh, very late on, which is fine and expected. Uh, we'll go through the approach again just very, very quickly. So we're going to come in via red table. We're going to go and intercept the localizer at Jargu. We're going to follow the localizer down through these three waypoints following this vertical profile here at Doip. We're going to uh, basically set our missed approach altitude, which is 14,000 feet. And then we're going to dial in a vertical speed of uh, approximately 1.6 uh, or 1.7 feet per minute. Um, and then our minimums are 10,220 feet. Uh, missed approach is, uh, as we briefed earlier, we're going to take a right turn and follow the localizer or LDA um, outwards. Outbound on 303, climbing to 14,000 feet. 6.5 degree glide slope or descent angle required. So it's going to be pretty interesting, guys, let's just say. going to be pretty interesting. We're looking good at the moment. We're nicely on profile. Need to be at 13,400 feet in 14 miles of Jagu. I reckon we should be picking up the uh, localizer when we approach uh, Red Table DBL. Uh, we can probably also ex expect some descent rate uh, warnings for the GPWS system on this approach, potentially. We'll see what happens. Let's go in a performance state, uh, performance here, and we'll just set our landing speeds. Our VREF is 134, so yeah, we're probably going to be looking at about 1,500 feet per minute as a descent rate. Alright, so it's going to cut this corner off like pretty pretty crazily tell you what I might do is just because it's done this weird thing here I'm actually just going to give myself a direct to Jagu uh, Jagu is straight forward in front of us we'll execute that and we have lost a bit of speed there but that's actually fine because we're starting to come on to our final approach course so we do want to slow down now anyway and start getting configured I'm actually going to pull the power back even more All right, great stuff. So we've got direct center that heading bug, and I am just going to. We've got the localizer now. Let's just set that course is 151. That's in, and the course for lock two. We actually need to set that to 303. Oh, that's not changing. Why is it doing that? Oh, it's auto tuned it for me. Okay. Uh, all right, then we want uh, 108.5. On nav two, and then we want that set to 303. Uh, oh, it's already set to 303. I'm not sure why this needle's not on it. Anyway, let's go back to uh, lock one. We'll go approach mode. I think we're going to overshoot it a bit there. Yeah, we have. Why did it? Why did it tune both the localizers in the? Uh, in nav two, that's a bit weird. I didn't have nav. I didn't have automatic selected. Very strange. Anyway, let's get the throttles to idle now. We still need to keep descending. We're actually a bit high now, which is really not good. It's taking an extremely wide turn here, which is a bit worrying. Our inbound course should actually be 151. I'm not sure why that's also changed. We're very wide out here, but <laughs> we should be okay. All right, we are 210 knots speed check. Let's go flaps one. And we'll go straight to flaps eight as well. 
So at FIMSO we needed to be at 12,300 feet, which we are about. At DOIP we need to be at 11,700, which we're about to capture. Uh, we do need a bit more vertical speed here, so I'm going to just dial that in real quick. We're going to go flaps uh, 20, and we're going to get the gear down as well. I'm going to turn the music down. Okay, so from DOIP, we're just going to set the altitude up a little bit like this so it doesn't capture it, and then we're going to put the vertical speed down at 1,500 feet per minute. I'm going to set 1.6 initially. We'll go for flaps 40. Uh, flaps 30, sorry. And we'll go for flaps full. Just to keep that speed down a bit, because we are sort of flying towards the ground here. You can see we're extremely high. I don't think we're going to be able to recover this. It really screwed me over there with the automatic... Um, tuning of the localizer so we'll have to do a go around uh, missed approach point is at SEAG right here which uh, is right here so we're going to hit uh... this is going to be fun guys <laughs> alright let's go for go around thrust toga is set let's rotate up to the flight directors and we're going to take a right turn immediately we're going to set our nav source to lock 2 I'm going to start that right turn outbound. And we're going to go to flaps 8. Now, my nav aid's really not set properly here, so I'm just going to try and follow the charts here as best as I can. Let's go to climb thrust speed. And uh, yeah. It doesn't seem to have um, activated the go around on the uh, FMS. It's also not picking up the localizer, which is just brilliant. <laughs> So I'm actually just following it on the uh, on my Navigraph charts, on my moving maps at the moment. We're climbing up to 14,000 feet. We are on the right course here, so let's see what happens if I just bring it right ground like this. And let's put in the autopilot there. And we're going to go for speed up to 220 knots here. Bring the power back a bit so we don't go crazy. Go flaps up. And uh, of course the gear up, which is, uh, of course I forgot that as well. <laughs> uh, right, let's see if we can get this nav aid tuned properly. So it should be on 108.5, which is tuned. Why is it showing me this data right here? This is so strange. It's, uh, yeah, very weird. Very, very weird. It seems to have actually activated the missed approach. It's just uh, I didn't have it drawn in, of course. Let's see what happens if I go to nav. Okay, uh, we need the FMS1, don't I? There we go. Okay, that was just me being dim there. <laughs> Too much to do. Uh, and then we go to missed approach. Yeah, so there we go. We're a little bit off it. I didn't have the altitude selected either because I didn't have time. But we'll just uh, give ourselves a little bit of a um, vertical speed going up. And I'm just going to give myself heading in bound to Linz. Actually, just going to direct just to decrease the workload a bit here. It's uh, all a bit hectic. Let's go back to nav mode and I don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, we're climbing up to 14. We've got the selected altitude in. All right, woof. <laughs> oh dear. 
Oh dear, that was, that was, that was tense. That was a lot to do, holy crap. I have no idea why it, why it decided to auto-tune the localizer on Nav2 as well when I had this manually selected here. That's, uh, that's super, th that really, really threw me off there. That's really, really annoying actually. Um, but nevertheless, um, absolutely fine. What I'm going to do instead this time is, uh, rather than going for the instrument approach, because I, I can't really rely on it, uh, I'm actually just going to go for a visual approach. Uh, we're going to do the Roaring Fork visual for runway 15, uh, which we'll brief in a moment here as we're just uh, flying out towards the hold. So we'll get this put in. Uh, we'll just go for runway 15 here. And uh, that's that. I'm not sure why it's just cleared out the rest of the missed approach for me. That's very strange. It shouldn't do that. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Very strange. Okay. Uh, right then, let's just put this in manually. So we'll put in a DBL and uh, it's going to be this top one here. Put that there. And we'll execute and uh, we'll just vector ourselves round back towards the red table VOR and then we'll start the approach again from there. Okay. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. All right. So as we're vectoring ourselves around here, I'll just quickly brief this approach. So we've got, uh, this is the Roaring Fork visual. Uh, runway 15, uh, weather minimum ceiling is uh, 6,000 feet, which obviously we have today, so that's looking good. So, uh, basically we're going to fly into red table, we're going to descend down to 12,500 feet. And then from red table, we're basically just going to fly this visual track here, this, uh, this one right here. You can see there's quite a few coming in, which looks pretty cool on this chart actually. Uh, but we're going to fly in from red table and straight down. There's no misapproach procedure on this uh, <laughs> on this uh, chart, so we'll have to make sure we nail this first time. Uh, but uh, as you can see, we're basically just going to fly sort of uh, south, uh, south, south, west, uh, just over this peak here, uh, with this peak on our left, and uh, follow it down to this peak, and basically just line ourselves up with the runway. It should be a bit easier than the, the instrument approach, to be quite honest but uh, it should be pretty fun nevertheless with it being a visual. But yeah, that was, that was, uh, that got a bit crazy there. So yeah, I'm blaming the aircraft for auto-tuning the, uh, the, 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 the localizer in both the nav frequencies when I, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Super annoying. Uh, because it had me, I was just faffing around with that and then we didn't, we turned too late for the localizer and it meant I was a bit high and I just couldn't, I couldn't focus. Too much to do. Too much. All right. Probably should have had the seatbelt signs on for that really and all these lights. Anyways, we're going to make ourselves our way back round to Red Table, which is just here. I'm just going to vector ourselves out so I'm sort of beam the, uh, the VOR here. What we could do as well is actually just tune this on 113. Just uh, bring that up as the nav source, because we don't really need uh, we don't need the FMS data anymore. We're going to do it visually, just so we can see the DME. We don't really need to set a course either. Um, although what I might do is I might just set a course that we're going to take as our initial course. We're going to go for one nine zero off the uh, off the. Um, Let's go for 185 actually from the VOR. Okay, sorry about the fuzz pack. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I basically just dialed in 
How? Oh my god, how long was that up there for? Jeez Louise. Anyways, uh, we're vectoring ourselves back over. I'm just going to repeat myself to the red table VOR, which is here. Uh, we're going to start a descent down to 12,500 feet, which is the recommended altitude to start this procedure. And we're going to get configured a bit early because, again, it's visual approach. I want to try and keep the speed a little bit down just so we've got a bit more time. Um, weather minimums is 6,000 feet. There is no actual minimum for this approach. But uh, obviously, with it being visual, you would assume that you could see the runway anyway. So not really any need for a minimum, I suppose. There we go. Altitude capture. I'm going to start a little bit of a right turn here. What I might do is I might just actually capture this uh, inbound course to the VOR and just fly straight along that to get me started on the approach. A good opportunity to test whether they actually fixed this uh, functionality as well. Get the fuel, 2.1 tons left. Looking fine. Let's go for flaps one. And to flaps eight. Let's go nav mode just real quick, see if we can capture this, uh, this VOR. See if it actually works. VOR one. It's turning. Oh my god, they fixed it. That's brilliant. Fantastic. Alright, here we go then, guys. Let's do this thing. Uh, I completely forgot I was on VATSIM. Good thing there's not many people around here. Aspen Traffic, Skywest 5597, uh, Roaring Fort Visual, Runway 15, uh, beginning descent from 12,500 feet. Okie dokie, so this is a visual approach, so I'm going to try and just uh, get my, uh, get some of these visual clues. Alright, so Red Table VOR is basically on top of these mountains here, so that's where we start the approach. Recommended 12,500 feet, we're going to be very close to these mountains. <laughs> the peak on these mountains here, just off to the left, the highest point, probably one of these here, is 12,045 feet. All right, guys, are we ready? Are we ready? <laughs> Such a relaxing time. I'm glad. I'm glad someone's finding it relaxing. Let's go for flaps 20. And I'm just going to go into our performance page here and just set our V ref. Uh, let's go flaps 30 and get the gear down. Alright, so we're going to be looking for the airport just down to our left. It should be right about here. And basically we're going to fly, uh, we're going to fly basically straight over this sort of ridge line right here. I think what we're only being aiming for is just just over here. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, it's this little peak actually. I think. Hopefully it is. Anyway, autopilot is disconnected. Let's start that descent. Minimums. Oh, they actually added a minimums call out. Or did they? No, they didn't. But it is giving me a call out. Let's get the flight directors off. Alright, oh I see where I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for this little uh, this little bit right here. I do need a bit more descent rate than this though, so let's uh 
get it down a bit. Quite a bit more descent rate than this. I'm going to go for flaps 40, just to stop the speed from increasing too much. And I'm actually going to just bring the camera forward a bit so I can actually see my visual clues a bit better. So basically just following this down and we're going to take a left turn into the runway which you can see there in the distance. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. Alright, the highest peak that we're about to pass over is 9,500 feet, so we can descend a little bit more. Oh, this is brilliant. Love it. Very high descent rate. Let's see what we're on. We're on 1.9, uh, 1,900 feet per minute at the moment. Of course, you guys on the stream can see that quite well. Let's start a left turn here. Minimums continue. Well, Minimums. Oh, they did. Oh, so they actually did yeah, add a call out for the MDA. Oh, that's brilliant. Love to see that. So the Pappy itself is at 3.5 degrees, I believe. So it might still say that we're Minimums. too high, even though we are not necessarily. Uh, we've got a sink rate warning. That's fine. Five. What we expected. Sink rate. Sink rate. I'm going to shallow the descent rate out just a little bit here. Minimums. Because I can see we're starting to get the sort of roughly normal picture in window. Still quite high though, to be fair. You're in front. Awesome. I don't know why I don't see you though. Yeah, so we've got one red at the moment. It's very difficult to see, but... Oh dear. <laughs> He's right in front of me. I don't see him, though. We're just going to go for it. Alright, I think we've got four reds one now, mouse. actually. Minimums. Minimums. Definitely feel like we're too high. Minimums. I don't feel like we're four reds, but that might just be my my view being skewed Minimums. now because it's, we've spent so long. There we go. We've Minimums. got one white. That's, that'll do us. Minimums. Minimums. Try to keep the speed up here. I don't want to drop Minimums. below my V. Uh, v ramp ref. We have got a 12 knot tailwind here as well. <laughs> 300. Minimums. 200. Coming in very steep here. Shallowing it out. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Oh, of course it floats. Come on. There we go, that'll do. Full reverse. Oh, look at that, Mariner's just vacated. We're gonna go for full manual braking here. And there we have it, ground spoilers are deployed. Woohoo! Skywest 5597 vacated from 5. <laughs> Alright, we made it guys. Holy crap, that was uh, that was good fun that. That was good fun. Uh, we'll get the flaps up now. And we'll get those reverses off. Uh, we'll get the landing lights and the strobe lights off as well. We'll turn the APU on. In fact, no, we don't need the APU. We'll turn the probes off.
I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go here. I think stand five. Oh baby, that was uh, that was pretty pretty wild. <laughs> Yeah, we're doing. I'll do it. Parking brake is set. Snow's wheel steering disarm. Uh, we'll also go ahead and just get a ground power unit connected immediately. And uh, we'll shut the engines down. Taxi lights off, beacon light off, seatbelt signs off, uh, windshield heat, we can turn that off as well, packs can come off, recirculation, isolation valve, fuel pumps, all off, looking good, let's get some doors open, beautiful, <laughs> there we go guys, there we go, <laughs> That was good fun, that. That was good fun. Let's have a look at... Uh, oh, I don't have little nav map open, so it's not going to record our track. But we can have a look at uh, Sim Toolkit and just see what it's looking like. Alright, so we've got 145 feet per minute, which is pretty good. I mean, we did float a little bit there, unfortunately. I'm still... I mean, I've not really flown the CRJ in weeks and weeks, so that's my excuse. So we were... Where is the touch Oh, it's there. It's almost rubbed off. So we're quite far down the runway here, but we still managed to stop in time. Center line tracking was okay, a little bit to the right, and the heading was, was again slightly off, but that wasn't too bad of a landing, I don't think, all things considered. Um, all right, let's run the final checklist then. So after landing, APU is off. Uh, transponder, we can turn that off now as well. There we go. Slats and flaps zero, lights are set, probes are off. Shut down checklist, parking brake is on. Seatbelts are off, thrust levers are shut off, anti-ice is off, fuel pumps are off, beacon light is off, nose wheel steering is off. And the terminating checklist, chocks and brakes are in and off. IRS is off. Emergency lights, we could turn those off as well now. Uh, Anti-ice is already off. Hydraulic pumps. Off. External lights. They're all off. Uh, APU is off. Battery master and the cockpit lights off. Hello? There we go. And we'll turn the, the uh, external power off as well. Great stuff. All right, there we go, guys. Welcome to Aspen. Absolutely stunning location for an airport. Absolutely unbelievable. This is one of the uh, actual uh, custom-made airports that Sobo did as well. It's pretty... Pretty not bad looking. Yeah, it's a nice one. Very nice, very interesting approach. I don't think that was perfect, but it wasn't actually too bad in the end, I think. Probably could have done a little bit better on the, the final there, tracking the uh, the pappies and whatnot, but overall I think that was pretty, pretty good. Alright then guys, that is going to be all from me for today. It's going to be... a well, it's a bit of a short stream today because, well, I don't have time for a full length one, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Nevertheless, that was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, definitely going to be practice that, practicing that one again a bit more to see if I can nail it a bit better. Um, but yeah, like I say, 
thank you very much for watching everybody i hope you guys enjoyed thomas thank you very much for joining paul as well and uh michael as well thank you for the stars as well today uh, everyone else thank you very much for tuning in uh, carl sorry i missed your message good evening i hope you're doing well i'm doing very well here thank you for asking um, but yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic evening. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.